I think one of the greatest things that's happened in this country is the rural electrification. I mean, when you think back, starting from scratch and trying to get a, a cooperative organized and getting people to say, hey, we're going to get power here all, you know, it, and getting lines and poles, uh, getting the equipment, uh, all of these people, that uh, they were just dedicated and uh, determined and uh, I think deserve just a, an awful lot of thanks for what they've done. As my uh, dad went out and uh, started organizing and contacting neighbors to see if they could get an electric cooperative going, which of course meant nothing to me outside of, he said we were going to get lights. And he would go out and get easements and contact neighbors. I, I've been very, very happy and proud knowing that my father was uh, involved over the years in getting it, getting it organized and was on the board. And in fact, his name appears on the Articles of Incorporation of the State of Wisconsin with the Secretary of State on April 23, 1936. His, his signature is on that, which is, makes me pretty proud. And uh, he spent 25 years on the board. He was uh, elected on the, at the first annual meeting and he spent approximately 25 years on it. It's been a terrific organization and the whole rural electrification, thing, I think, is the partnership uh, with the government and, and in getting the, the low interest loans to start it off to light up the skies at night in the rural areas. Once you've gotten the electricity and see what it can do for you and what it has done as far as the rural areas and the farmers and everything that it's done, it's been a, a wonderful thing. My grandfather bought that farm uh, 93 years ago. When he built his house, during the Depression, he built it with running water, with toilets, and electricity, but he had no electricity. So then he went on to try to get electricity, which took him a couple years. He went to the Power and Light, which was three quarters of a mile away with a line, and they said no, they couldn't run down the road. So he offered to pay for the poles, the lines, everything to get electricity they refused to do it. So then my grandfather, that winter, took his trusty old mule and he went door to door on his mule. And old Ginger was one of them faithful animals. And my dad rode that mule because it's the only way we could get through. 1936 was that severe winter. Everything was shut up with snow. It was terrible cold. But that wouldn't stop dad. And Dad went out and he said, well, if I go out in this kind of weather, the farmers are going to be home. Dad was turned down a lot of times, but he kept going. Well, in July, from all the efforts that Dad put into it, we had the opportunity and the privilege of being the first farm in Rock County to be turned down. At that time, there was no television, but there was radio. We are broadcasting live from the farm of J.O. Woodman in La Prairie Township on this, the 15th day of July, 1937. A crowd has gathered here not to witness the milking of cows, but rather the arrival of electricity to the Rock County countryside. After months of construction of electrical conductor and poles, engineer Harold Dernan is climbing a utility pole to turn on the first electricity used by the Rock County Electric Cooperative Association. By the end of the day, 122 miles of electrical line will be energized in La Prairie, Bradford, Turtle, and Clinton Townships in Rock County, and Darien and Sharon Townships in Walworth County. And there it is! A whistle blows to commemorate this life-changing event. Finally, folks that live in the country can have the same convenience that city residents have enjoyed for years. Mr. Woodman, can we have a word with you? They were interviewing Dad, and Dad said the blue was lit and hit by electricity. I think my grandfather at that time purchased a milking machine. It was, I can remember it when I was a little boy. It just made life so livable, I guess, when you got electricity. My grandfather was involved in the co-op, but then my dad, Ivan, 
He lived the REA and uh, the older generation, my father and Ed Hanawalt and, and Marty Oberdeck, they were very foresighted people. They could see the future and that was a big thing that REA has done for the people. They just worked as a co-op, everybody worked together. The beginning of electricity out in the rural area, it was a big deal. There were people that were used to not having everything and so they got by with what they had. The important thing was that you could turn a switch on rather than having to spend so many minutes and hours cleaning lamps and, and the inconvenience of going from one room to another. It was much easier to be able to turn the switch on. So they only put in what really needed to be like one light in a room and pole chains and things of that sort. It became a real pleasant thing for the family. But I can remember my dad talking to other people about it. Mr. Woodman come around and talk to them. And I do know it took a little time before they got to us because we actually, I'm still on the end of the lines. But I can remember we had one cow would not milk with the milk machine. He had to milk her by hand. And I can still remember him milking her by hand yet. And I can remember, you know, getting water up, washing clothes, bringing it up into the house from the milk house, cook stove in the kitchen, you know, burning, burning wood. And pretty soon she had a gas stove. She had an electric iron. We had in indoor toilets but it was quite a change. We turned little lights on. I can remember yet the little lamps and lights that we had on the walls and the ceiling lights. And it was just uh, unbelievable to go and turn a switch on and there it was. And in 1960, they had voted down paying out capital credits. In 1962, of course, they had this change in the directors and a new manager. My husband was contacted to see if he wanted to run for the board. Howard was very interested. I mean, his dad had previously been on the board years prior. So he ran and he got on the board in 1962. And the philosophy changed a little bit from what had been happening. And they had a build up in their reserve funds. So they did vote to start paying out capital credits, which was a big change for them. And has been positive. The members appreciate getting their capital credits. At that time, it was uh, all male. There were no women on the board like now we have two. I got to know Marty Oberdeck, who was a manager at that time. Marty probably was a, a good influence or a great influence on me. Then I started doing some articles for the center section for the paper. What I tried to do first on the district level and then on the national level was to try to get more women interested in running for the board to help know more about the co-op rather than just turn on the lights and not pay any attention to how they got to be there. It is very satisfying to think that maybe you said something maybe that encouraged them to try out for the board. I think it takes a long time to get something like that going. Everybody was surprised, and nobody more than I when I was elected. <laughs> I was told that one of my fellow gentleman directors said, well, I guess we're stuck with her now. <laughs> and 
here we are, 18 years later, and you're still stuck with me. Whenever Dad did something, he always, he always tried to do the best job he could. And I remember many times that uh, Sunday we would go for a drive. And then we would go and, and I imagine he was getting familiar with where the lines went because we would end up all different parts of the county and he would be looking at the, the transformers and everything and as we were driving. And uh, I never realized it. I thought we were just out for a Sunday drive, but I think actually he was probably working the National had a Queen program at that time, and Wisconsin did participate, but Rock County had not participated. My husband and I, along with Phil and Jean Holmes, started up the Queen program. The highlight was when our Rock County Queen, Sandy Torkelson, went on to win the state and then won the National in Las Vegas. It was an exciting time for everyone. One of the girls was a Queen for RE and it was a big deal down in Las Vegas. And I recall it was hard to do, but we stayed up until five in the morning. We were more used to getting up at five in the morning than going to bed at five in the morning. And when we went to the National, uh, she was asked to go to conventions and parades, etc. It was a very big highlight of our Queen program. I guess I look at it as a business where um, you're only as good as the people who work for you. I feel our staff here is just excellent. We're very fortunate to have the, the personnel we do working here. I learned what a cooperative was basically from the old guys, their dedication and what it all meant to work for a cooperative. The first thing that they made very clear was that this wasn't an ordinary job. When a storm came, whether it was lightning, a winter storm, or just wind, and that phone rang, it was pretty much set in stone that you dropped what you were doing and you came into work because the membership, getting the power back on was all part of the job and that was the most important thing. My most memorable experience at the co-op was this night there was a house fire and we, we go on uh, fire calls to shut the power off of the fire department. So we went down there and we disconnected the power and, and this woman was a single mother she had two little girls, and it was Christmas Eve, and her house was burnt to the ground. And she came up to me and thanked us for coming down there because she said, I didn't want to ruin your Christmas Eve. And I said, you didn't ruin our Christmas Eve. Well, Rock County back in the early 1980s was relatively small from electric cooperative perspective. At that time, actually was starting to have a somewhat unique member base in that it certainly served the rural areas outside of Gainesville and even into Northern Illinois. But in addition to that, was starting to see a suburban growth as well. And so it was kind of an interesting member mix, which gave us an opportunity to kind of learn to deal with the issues of not only the rural members, but also the suburban members as well. In 1980, when I came to the cooperative, the office was in a very small headquarters facility on Holm Street in downtown Janesville. Storage was minimal. It was all cold storage for the larger trucks. So when you, we went to get in our one and only bucket truck in the morning, it was pretty cold sitting in that cold warehouse um, in the middle of winter. And by about noon, it would, the seat would start to warm up. That was an old place. It was, it was adequate for the time. We finally outgrew that and came up to our place here on Kennedy Road. Got our first computer in 1978. In 1999, we went to the turtle system. We used to have meter readers that would go out and read the meters, and the turtles are automated, so we went and put this little device on the meter, and it would read the meters for us. They're called turtles because they're kind of a slow process. We'll call them in the next day, then we get the readings. 
that was a pretty big change for us. I run meters for probably at least 15 years uh, for Rock County Electric, and that started with my father. When you sat down to figure out whether or not you really made any money, it was irrelevant because it was like father, my father and I, and my children remember going many times because then I would make them go run and get the meters. <laughs> that I'd write it down just like my father did, so it worked out really quite well. Now, then all of a sudden modern technology is coming along and taking away our being able to read the meters and the quality time that we got to do it, but I, we did it long enough that it was really okay, it was, it was time. The acquisition of Illinois Territory changed us because not only did we quadruple in size, we took on natural gas, which was something that we didn't have knowledge of, so therefore there was a lot to learn. When we did purchase the uh, assets of Alliant Energy, they had natural gas and electric. We had never been in natural gas before, but they would not separate them. If we wanted to bid on it, we had to take both. All kinds of legal matters and regulations and stuff involved in, uh, in Illinois, and that involved having to get through the Illinois legislature a change in the law down there that a co-op could operate as natural gas. One of the things in dealing with Illinois, these people had not been familiar with cooperatives and not been on an electric co-op before, so there was a lot of education that was necessary to get them knowledgeable of what was going on. A lot of bumps in the road along the way here in that acquisition, but uh, some of those have smoothed out and expect some along the way always in some new venture. And this past decade, we have been very fortunate to have Shane Larson here as our CEO and going through this whole process of the acquisition. Being a part of a co-op that's been in existence for 75 years is, is a real honor and it's a real privilege to serve the members of Rock Energy. And I think about the members that started up 75 years ago and those handful of directors that went to the state secretary and signed the Articles of Incorporation and how there were stories of some farmers saying they weren't going to sign up for a fly-by-night operation and here we are with nearly 27,000 meters and approaching 50 employees, full-time employees. We've truly, truly grown and we will continue to grow and we'll continue to do what needs to be done for our members. There will be many challenges, uh, but I have a lot of confidence in our board and we have a tremendously dedicated staff of employees. Each member we have own part of this company and they have a say in it when we have our annual meeting they can come and they can vote on the issues. I've had several members have come to me and said boy we've got a great crew of people out there they're very courteous and everything they helped us in every way that's probably my greatest satisfaction. Being involved with a co-op was like you were in a family. Uh, the members and the employees, staff, directors all caring and, and concerned about each other. So it was a wonderful experience. One of the reasons that I like Member Appreciation Day is because you get to see the members and serve them. And you get to talk to them and really get to know them. When you see them in person, it's a different perspective. You develop a different relationship with a member when you're person to person. I like the older people that have been in our services for a long time because they have stories each time and they're so grateful. Like for instance, when the power goes out, power comes back on and the boys are out there in the freezing cold and they get it back up, you know, they're so excited and thankful. I'm proud to be a Pro Co-op member because of the, the help, they're all friendly. It's just something different. That's the reason I come down here every month to pay my bill. I come down just to see the girls. They're very friendly. You know, an electric co-op enterprise is a very unique form of business. I think one of the greatest features of it, that even in a community the size of Janesville and Boyd, Rock County Electric is a homegrown, member-owned, locally controlled organization whose entire sphere of concern is that local community. And I think it's a great structure that was developed in a time when other utility companies were not interested in providing service. That model has now lasted 75 years, and there's no question in my mind, as long as the electric cooperatives continue to pay focused attention to their local community, 
be interested in the things that are important to the local community, that they will exist for another 75 years as well.